Hey fishy folks and happy Sunday fun day to you. Guys, do me a favor before we get started, just obliterate the subscription button if you haven't done so already. Gently boop the notification bell. And of course, when we're done, check out michaelsfishroom.com for plecos and guppies and all kinds of plecos and guppies. Anyway, fishy folks, um, my last video which came out on Friday was a fish room tour and uh, a lot of people liked it. And a couple of people commented on some of the systems I have. I think I mentioned something about the water change system, whatever. So today we're gonna talk about the auto water change system and the air system. So do me a favor, go grab a snack and a beverage in the comments below, let me know what it is, cause love the food. And uh, stand by, let's All right, let's you folks, the meat and potatoes of the system is that thermostatic mixing valve right there. It's essentially the same type of valve that you have probably in your shower if you have one uh, handle for your shower that controls hot and cold water. So the two PEX lines that come in, one's hot, one's cold. I know they're both red, just deal with it. Uh, and that mixes the water and to a certain temperature. Now, I believe that goes only as low as 80 degrees. And so the water going into my tanks is approximately 80 degrees. Uh, water comes in through there, goes through these three filters. The first one is a sediment filter. The next two are carbon block filters. Now my water doesn't have any chloramines in it. it the, the township does use chlorine. Those carbon block filters take care of the chlorine. You may be saying to yourself, why do you have two? Well, either you buy a filter set up with one filter or three filters. So boom, two carbon block filters. No, uh, in case one, uh, isn't working a hundred percent and there's letting some chlorine through the second one will take care of it now I know for a fact I have low chlorine in my tanks because I've put water directly from the hose into the tank and then put fish in there without a problem but um, I don't know how low it is I also don't know how much chlorine those pull out so you, those are things you may want to figure out if you do your own auto water change system. Now, if you have chloramines, you're going to have to do something else, maybe some chemical interaction like safe or prime or some other type of more expensive filters, but it can be done. All right, fishy folks, it goes from those three filters along this pipe. And at first we see this T. What is this T for you may say to yourself? Well, it goes down this PEX little uh, tube down here to the spigot. And I use this hose to fill buckets. And if I put a longer hose on there, I can uh, fill empty tanks. This is the shark bite um, spigot that I was telling you about in Friday's video. You can see right there, it's got the PEX uh, shark bite connection. And I don't really like it. You don't get enough uh, grip, so it can be hard to turn. Um, you know, maybe getting old and my hands are getting weak, but I was in auto tech years ago. and. My hands have always been pretty strong, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's arthritis, or it just sucks. It's one or the other. Um, all right, moving on. So, past that T, we have another T, and we split into two zones. We'll call this zone two. We'll call that zone one. And the reason we're gonna call it that is because right there is the controller for it. Now, let's just talk uh, about these valves. They are irrigation valves, three quarter inch PVC, uh, um, connections to the irrigation valves and all it is is a solenoid so when current goes through there it opens opens or closes in fact it opens is what it does um, and then it lets water through and it lets water through to that pipe to that side or from that pipe to that side so uh, I'm gonna turn on the lights back there so you can see a little bit better. And uh, stand by, go refresh your beverage. All right, fishy folks, as always, it's a disaster. I don't really care. Low voltage wiring, so it doesn't matter. Oh my God! Just kidding, it's, I'm fine. Um, I did have to meter this water a little bit because uh, that side over there has so many more tanks, it can go full pressure. And you know, there's plenty of, of water pressure over there, but if I leave this full pressure, then because there's only, I don't know, nine or 10 outlets plus one big pipe, uh, it it's too much. So I had to meter that down a little bit and that's how I did it. 
Move these wires out of the way so you can see that that big round thing right there. It's called a union. Essentially, it allows me to take the system apart without cutting the PVC. Um, it just unscrews and separates. Pretty easy. Um, I recommend using them if you're going to have a system that you may or may not have to um, maintain. I also have one. I have one. There are a lot of them actually, but I have one on that side either. So essentially, let's say that um, solenoid failed, which I've had one fail before. Um, luckily, it failed closed, not open. I would loosen it from the union and then unscrew it from in between here and here because it unscrews here and uh, take it down, replace it, put it back together, be done. All right, so the water goes through there, goes through that union, comes through this pipe, and then down to these little manifolds. Now, this is uh, just a coupler. It's a slip and a threaded coupler. This threaded piece is called a riser, and this is just a drip irrigation manifold. I'll put links to Amazon uh, in the description below. If you click on them and buy something, you don't have to necessarily buy that. I do make a couple pennies. It is a Amazon associate link. I'd appreciate it, but don't feel obligated. Um, I do have a couple of manifolds on this side, and you can see next to the the one with the red handle, the black handle ball valve, there's a pipe going to the pleco tank. That allows me to change more water than uh, than if I was just dripping a little bit in. So uh, that tank does get quite dirty, so I do try to change a little bit more water in it than uh, than just a couple of drip tubes. So. Uh, all right, that's it for this side. Let's talk about my little orbit controller over here. So this is just an orbit uh, sprinkler system controller. I can control, I think, four zones, have three different programs. Uh, I, the, the, I can change water like four different times a day, different lengths, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can see the, the auto water change system comes on at 1 a.m. And the reason I do that is... Um, Nobody in my house is going to be taking a shower at 1 a.m., so they're not going to have a problem if this comes on losing hot water. And most importantly, because it's my fish after all, um, it won't affect any water temperature down here. Even though there is a thermostatic mixing valve over there, if we were to run out of hot water, it would still flow cold water. So, all right, fishy folks, let's take a quick look at the other side. First, I got to turn the light on. So. Again, refresh your snack or beverage and stand by. All right, fishy folks, this side is a little bit more of a disaster because I still have parts of the original auto water change system. Um, if you check back way, way back in the beginning, my auto water change system was a closed system. So all the tanks were connected and I had a sump and I used PVC and these, these ball valves over here, you can see down over here. Uh, to control water flow to each tank and uh, it was my original idea it worked for a while but I decided to go with a different system speaking of the system you may be asking how I got the idea for it I just watched a lot of YouTube I watched a lot of different uh, youtubers and saw what they did and saw um, oh my god we have fry in the project tank sorry look you can see the female the mama She's hiding up on that leaf, and you can see the little tiny fry that I are probably minutes old. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, real quick, because I want to shut the light off. Uh, here are the manifolds for this side. Um, you can see the same setup, very easy. Uh, just the coupler, the riser, and the manifold. Here's the old black irrigation tubing. You know, I, I always say I'm going to do a project and clean all this up, cut it all down, clean it up, make it look nice, blah, 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 but I don't have time. All right, uh, real quick, the drain system. So water uh, drips into the tank or goes into the tank right there. See that blue line? And then it drains through this overflow standpipe, drill tanks, bulkhead to this tubing, into this drain, drain into the sump. That's just a 30-gallon tank I had with a sump pump. I originally had a regular pump in there with um, an added on float and uh, the float failed at one point and the pump failed at a different time. So I made a video about it, I think, or I talked about it or something. And uh, Greg Jones 
said to me, just get a real sump pump. I've used one in my basement fish room for five years, never had a problem. So I went out and bought one because uh, I trust Greg. So essentially, if you don't know how a sump pump works, that piece right there is a float. When that comes up to a certain point, the pump comes on, then it goes down, pump stops. And that's how it works. A um, Couple other things about the drain. This is four inch drain pipe, just drill it. Put the hoses in i see people that do fish rooms that like use pvc and glue it and all that stuff i don't know why um there's no pressure so you don't need to glue it as long as you have your pitch right so it's pitched down like this so the water flows as long as you have it right the water will go fast enough there's a calculation somewhere i forgot what it is but um the water will flow and it won't back up. So I don't know why you would glue it. It's just more expensive and more work if something fails, but whatever. A uh, couple other things, you can see the one inch pipe that comes up from the sump pump there. And then there's a union as you, you, know, you know about. This is something different. This is called a one way check valve. It allows water to only flow this way. And the reason why I have that there is, if I didn't have that, the pump would come on, the water would shoot up this pipe and then when the pump stopped, whatever water was in this pipe would come back down. The pump would come back on and shoot it back up and it would just keep going till your pump burned down. Another thing here, this is a uh, connector. This was always a wet uh, zone and that um, one-way check valve, they're like 10 bucks or something and I'm cheap. I didn't want to buy a new one. So, and I needed something real quick. So I used those two connectors that I bought at Home Depot, I think. Um, I think they were like five bucks each and it allowed me to Put this thing together without drying it off and using glue and waiting, you know a couple hours. So it worked out for me um, Real quick more baby super red bristlenose plecos These guys this is their third batch of babies. So that's pretty cool. All right. I'm gonna shut the lights off See if those fry they're probably not even the right fry, but I like fry they're tender and delicious all right, let's move on to the something else. Uh, do me a favor, stand by. All right, fishy folks, let's talk about the air system. That is a Gemco air pump. I forgot what model it is. Um, I bought it like two years ago, a little more than two years ago. Uh, John from Gemco recommends once a year you replace the diaphragms. It's a diaphragm pump, not a linear piston air pump. I was too cheap back then. If I do upgrade or do buy one, I will buy a linear piston. They're more energy efficient and quieter. Not that this is noisy at all, but. Um, so the way that the air pump works, it's got a diaphragm that basically does this and creates uh, air pressure, which then goes through that tube into the closed loop system, which means there's a big ring that runs around the whole fish room. You can see it there and over there. Um, if you have too much air pressure, you have to bleed it off. They make valves for that, or you could just open a valve up. Um, I had to do that for the first couple of weeks I had the fish room, but then uh, I just had enough tanks where I didn't need to do that. So um, the air goes from that line, that pipe with these nice little silver valves. You just drill a hole and uh, then you screw those in with a drill and it taps itself and it's done and they're perfect um so diaphragm air pump i do have diaphragms john recommends replacing them once a year it's been over two years i have them i bought them six months ago still haven't replaced them maybe i'll do a video on that when i do it but um the key to the fish room is definitely the auto water change system but this definitely helps as you know i run um, sponge filters or box filters in every tank and uh you know what can i say it it's an in it's a inexpensive very efficient way to filter water so all right fishy folks that's it for the systems of michael's fish room we'll uh we'll leave watching chewy and uh his fancy head a couple people made comments that you know i keep joking about that big bulge on his uh on his head and you know they might not like it so i don't really care it's a cock Cock jokes and fart jokes, always funny. All right, guys, hope you liked it. Have a great day. Michaelsfishroom.com, King and Queen Cichlids, Super Cichlids, mm, Cobol Aquatics Food. See ya. Hi, 
Alright fishy folks and happy Sunday fun day to ya. Guys before I get started do me a favor just obliterate the notification. No not. God damn it. Alright fishy folks we're going to start with the main system in the uh, fish room the auto water chain system. That doohickey over there is a th thermostatic. Easy for me to say. Hi, fishy foot. Ah. 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 <coughs> Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Hope everyone had a great weekend. And, uh, you know, looks as good as me. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday funny to you. Guys, before we get started, do me a favor. Obliterate the subscription button. Gently, boop. Should be over here. Boop. 